Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, nice to see that everyone came back. So first thing let's talk about is writer's block. And I'm pretty sure you probably heard about it, but just in case you haven't, writer's block is just when you can't think about what to write. And there are many things that will stop you from writing or many ideas. And one thing is the idea that your writing does not sound like a professional writer. I understand this feeling because I read a lot or I read so many books. Um, but I understand. So you love, you know, your favorite authors and you feel like your writing will never be as good as their writing. But you have to remember that these people, they actually have editors and they work with companies. So the re you know, these editors are people that like fix their writing, polish it, clean it, make it so shiny and good. And you know, it's it's just that's why their writing sounds their books sound amazing and that's why your book or your stories don't sound like theirs because you don't have an editor. Um, you know, and it's really hard to edit your own writing. I don't know why, it's like your brain just when it's reading it, it fixes everything. But when you're reading somebody else's you're like, Oh my gosh, I see all your mistakes but then you can't see all of your own mistakes and that's just how it is. It's just you're you use a different part of your brain when you're writing versus editing, so I don't know why. The only way you can edit your own writing is maybe if you take your writing, not look at it for like a few months or something, a few weeks till you forgot everything, then you maybe you can edit it, but it's just so hard. So, you know, and I never really realized that until I was asked to edit this online fan fiction novel called Fragments of a Shattered Moon for a girl who writes under a false name. Now, this novel is very popular online if, you know, not that you guys read fan fiction, but it is very popular. Um, if you read it, you would never know that the girl, her, she's not actually very good at English. Her first language is Spanish. She lives in Mexico. Um, you know, she just was writing the story for a while and I was following it. I was reading. I was like, oh my gosh, your story's so good. And then after a while, she, a few chapters, she was like, she lost her editor. So she's like, I need help. So I was like, okay, you know, I'll help you. Um, so she sent me one chapter and I was like, hey, 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 this is not the same story I was reading. This is how come it sounds so different? I mean, it's totally not the way that I was just shocked how the unedited version of her story was totally different from the edited version. So it just wasn't, her English was not there. Her English was not good. So the story was great, but the her English was not. So I would sit there and I would, you know, every two weeks she'll send me a chapter. I'll fix each line, each sentence till it sounds like English was her first language. And then she would post it and everybody would be like, oh, this story is so good. So, and <laughs> I was just surprised. So how, uh, you know, it doesn't matter as long as she writes, she writes her chapters, they're like 5,000 words. You know, yeah, the English is not great, but the story is good. So we fix it, we fix it, we fix it, we fix it. So, and sometimes we'll argue and be like, hey, look, I don't think that the character should say that and she's like yes they should I'm like no they shouldn't <laughs> so it's just uh, it's just different when you're editing when you're editing somebody's own work versus your own so because you cannot tell me like I can't uh, when I'm writing I just can't see my mistakes I just can't only like maybe later on I'm like oh my gosh I can't believe I did that or I wrote that so but either way that's just how your brain is when you're writing so don't worry about it so much about making mistakes your editor hopefully one day you'll have an editor hopefully one day I'll have an editor but one day they can uh, they'll fix your mistakes for you but in the meantime just write so this poor girl should sit there write all this stuff and you're like oh my gosh your English is not good but <laughs> she writes one of the most popular stories like it's so great oh my gosh the story makes people cry it's so good <laughs> so don't worry about it just write Alright, so cause and effect. If you want your writing to sound real, then everything in your story must have a cause and effect. While in real life you can say that if something bad happened to you, that it was bad luck. But in a story, there's no such thing. Everything that happens should happen for a reason. Okay? So, you know, in a short story, maybe you can say this caused this. Okay? But if you're going to do a long story, the reason why they're hard is because you have to say, okay, this caused this, caused that, caused this, caused this. So it's very hard. That's why it's hard because you have to make it sound realistic. So even if you are talking about, um, I don't know, dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. I don't know if you guys watched that movie. It was crazy. It was it was so good. <laughs> so, but you know, the them releasing the dinosaur caused the dinosaur to go and 
you know, attack everybody, but everything had, whatever you, one thing you did caused the other thing, caused the other thing, and then at the end, it just made so much sense, you know, why they couldn't catch the dinosaur because of what the scientists did, even though it's science fiction, and it's not realistic, and we know there's no such thing as dinosaurs, and we know there's no such thing as a scientist that could create a dinosaur and fix the genetics to make them that dangerous or that smart, but because there was cause and effect in the story, it made it seem like it was realistic. So whenever you have uh, a story, it needs to have a cause and effect. So that way, even if it is a fantasy story or a science fiction story, it makes it realistic to others, okay? Now for your first sentence, um, I think that's where people get stuck on, but don't worry about it so much because whatever your first sentence is, like, I mean, somebody like Stephen King, who's a best-selling author year after year after year, he spends forever and ever and ever on his first sentence. But it's one of those things where, you know, you fix in the editing process. So don't worry about it so much at the beginning. It doesn't really matter. Um, just, you know, write anything. Think about what your character wants. Write a sentence about what the action is. Write a sentence about the setting about the narrative. If you still don't know, just say once upon a time. It doesn't matter. So just write something and don't worry so much about it. Yeah, it's a very important sentence, but it's one of those sentences that it's best to come back and think about it later. It's not one of those things that you really have to worry about right away. So just write anything and don't worry about it because remember, we're just practicing, right? Okay, so the first story or the second story, sorry, that we're going to talk about is asking for help and I'm sure you've seen this story many 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 times uh, to need help is just basically something bad happened the character lost something or they're unable to get something they needed um, your characters you'd have you have somebody that's asking for help you would have the power and authority who because of their position is able to give advice um, you'd have the persecutor the person who doesn't actually want to help the person okay so for, you know, maybe the persecutor is somebody who is like, you know, they believe that needing help is a sign of weakness, thinking that you don't deserve help or support, they're picky about or choosy about who they want to help, not speaking up because, you know, they're just not going to offer to help at all. They're waiting for someone else to make this decision to help that they're not going to offer. Um, so the persecutor adds a lot of conflict to the story. Um, why did this start? somebody got in trouble, they got bad news, or somebody needs outside help, okay? Now things that people would ask, you know, for help for would be things they need. So think about what are human needs, survival, safety, belonging, autonomy, meaning, playing, if they're a child, of course, right? They want to have fun, um, or even teenager, I guess. Well, I guess, who knows, everybody wants to have fun, right? Honesty, uh, just, you know, food, security, friendship, love, freedom, faith. Just think about the things that people need. Those are probably the things they're going to ask for. If you're somebody who does not actually like asking for help, then maybe you're the person that other people ask you, know, you for help. So just think about the things that people would ask you for help, and maybe that would be the thing that you could write a story about. So, you know, in this story, first of all, you're going to have somebody with the goal of you know, that they need to get help. Then you'd have a conflict that they to, they need to ask help from a power of authority. The disaster would be that the asker gets help but the advice is unwanted or maybe it's not available. Reaction, how do they feel? Dilemma, why will it be hard for them to make a decision? And decision, at the end, what does the asker decide to do, that they want to do? So let's use an example. Again, me and my examples. <laughs> so, Abdullahi did not want to pay for a speeding ticket. He went to the Somali Community Center to ask for advice from his, with his unhappy father. The community advisor told him that he, you know, should just pay the ticket or pay for a lawyer. Um, Abdullahi does not have the money, and his father does not want to help him or offer to help at all. Um, dilemma, he's like, okay if I don't fix this, I'm going to go to jail, so I have to fix this. At the end, Abdullahi decides, you know what, I'm just going to, I don't care, <laughs> I'm going to suck up my pride, and I'm going to ask my father to borrow the money to pay for this, the ticket, even if my father's going to yell at me. So, you know, there you go, asking for help. 
but you have the you know the three different characters okay so go ahead and uh, write an outline for your six steps that happen um, whether it's six minutes one hour or six hours write a hundred to two hundred words for each step of your short story okay so you know should be uh, you know whatever whatever you can do if you can do a hundred that's great if you can do 200 that's great I mean if you could do more that's fine but of course don't overdo it <laughs> so all right so either way remember write a short story every week it's not possible to write 52 bad short stories in a row bye